So no, I didn't really sell my car just to buy this drone, but I did sell my car so let's give her a quick farewell before we start the video. It was a good car and it took me quite a few places and provided many dash cam videos that you've seen on this channel so bye little red Toyota Matrix, I'll miss ya. Anyways, have you ever made a purchase that you don't regret whatsoever? Something where maybe you're flip flopping on the price because it's a little bit on the high end or you're just a little bit unsure whether or not it'll be worth it, but once you get the product, you're just, your mind is blown. Well, that is the DJI Mavic Air for me. I thought up until this point that I'd be lugging a giant, cumbersome drone in order to get quality 4K footage, but no, that's not the case, and I was surprised at how small this thing is. You should have seen my reaction to unboxing it. In fact, here it is. Look how nicely this is packaged. Uh, you have the case that it comes with, or maybe this one's the case. Let's see. <laughs> wow, this is so tiny compared to the me drone that I unboxed last time. Just turned on a little bit more light here. So you can see a little bit better. Oh my goodness. That's the drone. Wow. This thing. Look at the size of my hand. Look at the size of this. Oh my goodness. I would have thought the big package here was the drone. <laughs> yeah, no shame there. I honestly thought that the drone would be in the bigger box and the accessories would be in the smaller box. <laughs> well, I was wrong. This thing opens a world of possibilities because it's a lot smaller than other drones and still has very good video quality, which makes it able to get in places where perhaps you need something a little bit more subtle. It's not quiet by any means, it's about as loud as other drones like the Mi drone, and the noise it makes is quite a high pitch due to the small blades, but because of the small size you can throw it under your jacket, and maybe in a jacket pocket, and just take it anywhere. I'm not going to spend too much time on the unboxing here, but I got the Fly More combo which came with the bag, the hard case, three batteries, remote, prop guards, extra blades, everything that you need to fly, and I would recommend getting this kit over the base kit just because of the extra batteries. Once you fly this, you're going to want to fly it more. The build quality of the drone is quite solid. It's made out of plastic, but it feels a lot heavier than it looks. Unfolding the arms is very smooth too, especially compared to that cheap DJI knockoff I reviewed about a year ago. I mean, considering the price difference, this better be better, huh. Anyways, there is a gimbal cover that you need to remove before flying this drone every time, and these little legs at the bottom unfold as landing gear. At this point, I want to note something fairly important. Because of the small size of this drone, you're a little bit more limited as to where you can actually take off from, more so to concrete or very fine gravel. I wouldn't recommend taking off somewhere wet because of how low this sits down, nor would I recommend taking off somewhere that has like tall grass or rocky, you're going to need somewhere that's pretty smooth or the confidence to fly it out of your hand. The controller unfolds and the phone sits at the bottom. There are a couple of really nice touches here. For example, the thumbsticks are hidden away. As well, the cord is removable and replaceable with an included USB-C, micro USB, or iPhone cord to keep things compact. To launch the drone, you need to do a ton of updates, and I recommend doing that before you actually go out into the field. Just sit at home and kill an hour while the drone updates, the controller updates, the battery updates. Oh man, I think even my phone updated here. There's even a little simulator in the DJI app you can use just to practice flying before you actually take this thing out. One thing I noticed while updating the firmware is that there is a noticeable fan noise from the drone. So don't be afraid if you hear that, that's perfectly normal. Once you get out in the field, it takes about one minute for this drone to be ready to go. There's no fiddling around with compass errors or anything like that that there was with the Mi drone. It just goes right away. Takeoff is easy and the drone hovers once you've taken off, so you have the option to go forward, back, wherever. It hovers very closely in place with hardly any movement at all. Flying the drone is a pleasure too. In standard mode it's a little bit sluggish, but in sport mode it can go fast. 
I don't want to say too much here because I've got to leave some of it for the full length review which will probably come up during my trip. However, I can say from my first couple of flights, so far so good. The drone is smart and a voice announces to you what it's thinking, for example when it's landing or when it's taking off. I find that it beeps a lot though and there's no way to silence those beeps. Initial impressions of video quality are quite good as well, but so far they look as good or better than the Mi 4K, with the gimbal providing the same level of smoothness. I also noticed that there are more fine adjustments for the gimbal so if you want to do a real slow pan up or pan down, it's possible. I'll try and get in a full comparison between the Mi Drone 4K and the Mavic Air in terms of video quality over the next two weeks, you know, before I leave on my trip. But no guarantees, it's gonna be quite nuts between now and then. In the meantime, I do like the Mi Drone and at its price point of $500, it's quite good. However, if you can afford it, I recommend going for the Mavic Air, just because it's that much smarter and that much more portable, less cumbersome, with equivalent video quality. If you have any questions, please let me know, and of course, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, I appreciate all your support.